Hello, I'm Kate with Joyful Arts and thank you for being here for another video. Today, we are going over the element value. To begin, you'll need your workbook and project paper. You will also need colored pencils, water, your paint brushes, a rag, your watercolor paint, and small watercolor paper. Now push up your sleeves and let's get started. Okay, first thing first, let's open up. We already got color done, we got shape done, and now we are on value. Everyone there? Okay. Value is a degree of lightness or darkness in a color. Successful artwork uses a full range of values to create illusion of light. Tints and shades, what are those? Tints and shades is a color mixed with white. So tints are colored mixed with white and shades are colored mixed with black. This side, you are adding black and these are the shades. You're adding white this side and those are your tints and creating value. There are many ways to create value in our work. As you can see the shading in these and then multiple variety of different colors. You can see shadows here, you can see lighter over here. And then these, they use a lot of like shading techniques. There's cross hatching, use lines that are cross over each other. Painting can be mixed to, mixed to create a full range of values. Pencil or charcoal can be blended to create smooth shade transitions. There you go, that's the basis of what is value. Now move on to your warm-up page where we will be practicing it. The element of value refers to the lightness or darkness of a color, as we went over before. Value can be created in a black and white scale by making marks with a pencil or ink pen either further away or closer together. Now, let's grab a random color. Let's start with, let's see, let's do purple. And let's choose a shape. So create a value using a simple line. So when you start drawing your lines, draw your lines really close over here. So they like almost fill it in all the way. This may take a little bit of time, but that's okay. So do tons of really close lines on this side, like you see all the X's really close on that side. There are your lines, and the closer you get to this side, the more and more your lines start to spread out. So we got them starting to spread a little bit, and they're going to spread more and more and more like that. You can even make it a little closer over here so you can kind of see it getting darker to lighter like that. Now if you were to look at something like this really far away, it would look like it was perfectly blended over. But if you're looking here, you can still see how it's darker here and then it gets lighter and you can see that here as well. Now we're going to create a values using simple shapes. Let's see, let's use green this time. Now you don't have to use the same colors as me, but you can if you would like. Now simple shapes. Let's use a geometric shapes. That's going to be a simple one. So our triangles is a geometric shape. So do tons of really close triangles over here. Back and forth however you would like them to be. And for this one we're going to try doing the triangles relatively the same size. Do tons of really close triangles here. And if you need to take your time on that, that's okay. Go on your own pace and you'll be good. Really close over here. Start spreading them out a little bit more as I get more over here. Okay. Goodness, my hand's already getting tired from these. They're just little triangles. 
If you guys would like, you can even do simple shapes like a square. Or you can even do circles if you would like. Circles would probably be easier than this. And then we're spreading them out really far, like that. See? And you can even add a little bit more here so you can see the transition a little bit better. Like that. See? Now create value using cross hats, tiny, tiny cross lines. Okay, I'm going to use orange for this one. So you're going to start with lines like this, getting really close because they're going to end up crossing over each other. So start with really close lines, up and down, up and down, going up and down. And then as you get this way, you're going to make them spread more and more and more. Okay. Now this one can seem a little difficult at times, so I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to make it kind of look like this. So I want to go out like this, so when they're like that. So I'm going to give myself like a little point here. You can see right there. I'm going to go out like this. And as they get more and more down the line, they spread out more. See, just like that. Let's add one more right there. See? You can see all the lines going up and down. And then you can also see the lines going that way. So they're closer over here, and they're farther away over here. Now that's how you create it with like different shapes and different objects. Now you can create different values of color by adding black or white. Adding white creates tints as we went over before. And then adding black creates shades. Use one color of paint plus black and white to mix tints and shades below. If you don't have paint, practice by blending crayons. Today, because we have these nice colored pencils, that is what we are going to be using. So get your black and one other color. Let's see. Hmm, I don't know what color to use. How about this? I'm going to use a... Let's do a blue. I'll do blue. Okay. Now, this is the pure color, which is called your hue. So fill in your first square here all the way with whatever color you chose. Make sure it's nice and dark so you get the actual full color. So with this one, you want to push pretty hard. Just get the entire square filled in all the way. Okay. Now we are going to do the same thing here. But because it's shade, we're going to be adding some black to it. Whoops, I went out the lines already. Messy me. Okay. Fill this in as quickly as I can so I can show you guys how to do this. So I'm going to fill this in, but like I said, we're going to have to add our black. So push fairly lightly with this one because you only want a little bit of black for this one, not a whole lot. So go across this with pushing kind of lightly with your black. See, so it looks like a tint darker. Now we're going to do this again. I'm going to fill in this square blue. All the way. This can be a hand workout at times, you guys. Okay. Okay, now that I got it all filled in there, now we're going to push a little bit harder this time with our black. I'm going to make this one pretty dark. Back and forth until you get about the dark color you think you need. You're going to keep adding black until it's like a really dark blue. Okay. Now we got that there. Whoops. 
Well, now we know not to do that. Don't. Once you're done going a whole lot with your black, do not smear it. Okay. We got that one. Now, this one, because you add so much black to something, you get over so far that it just turns out to be black. So, this one, we're just going to fill all the way in with our black pencil. All the way. Every little mark, and make sure we have no white in there because this is not a tint. This is a shade. So we're only going to have black. You can probably blow on it to get the shards off, and you'll be fine. And we keep going. And there we go. I think if you're doing this all day. You can really get a hand workout. Here we go. Let's stretch our hands out a little bit and give them a small break. Because I don't know about you, but my hands are tired. Okay. Yeah, it's good with your little hand break. Okay. Now, we do not have a white pencil. My apologies. But, what you can also do is just push not so hard with your brush to make it feel like it gets white. Because the paper is white. So it's like we're adding blue to white. So we have our hue, our plain color, and then we're going to do this, but we're not going to push very hard. And that's how you make it look lighter when you're using colored pencils, so you don't have to use white, because sometimes colored pencils do not do this the best. So to create a tint, just push lighter when you're using colored pencils. But if you are using paint, you will add white for sure. And if you're using watercolor, your white is your water. But like I said here, our paper is our white, and we just aren't going to push as hard. Now, for this square, we have to push really, really lightly. Really light. Like you're pet petting a new puppy. <laughs> Don't push very hard. Here we go. Push very, very lightly. So you can still see the blue, but it's not very dark at all. Make sure you still get all the spots so the color is all even throughout the whole thing. And there you go. You have your color hue in the middle, slowly moving over to your shades. And then you have your color hue slowly moving over to your tints. Well, it's really cool when you're all done. And you guys can choose any color you would like for that also. Okay. Oh, we're all done there. Now close your workbooks, and once again, put them somewhere you will not lose them. I'm going to put this here. Now, you have your watercolor paper. We're going to start with only, we're going to use one of these. There you go. How about we use that one? Now, we have our watercolor, and these come in packets, so let's take those out. These did give you white watercolor but we will not be using those today okay you have your rag your paint brushes your watercolor paint make sure you have quite a bit of water you're going to need it okay so i'm going to first show you guys some examples so you know what we're doing today so i did this before and i used orange and this is how that turned out and you slowly add black, but with orange it kind of turns to brown, but that's good. And with this one, I did blue. If you haven't noticed, I kind of like the color blue. <laughs> and then, let's see. This is one that I did a while ago, but this is what we're going to be doing. If you're using blue, you will be making an ocean. And if you're using colors like red or orange or yellow... You'll be making like a sunrise almost. And you'll give it little trees. So it looks like a really cool silhouettes. So let's see. What do I want to start doing? I'm going to start with... How about a red this time? We're going to start with red. Now get a lot of water on your brush. And bring it over. And we're going to get quite a bit of water. So bring it over here so you can like dip some water there just like that once you get your water in you want to mix it up really well don't mix too hard or it'll make a mess 
So just mix it until you get a really good color just to get all the pigment out of the watercolor. And this right here that we're going to be working with will be our color hue. Get this, all of our colors. Okay, there we go. Now, we're going to start with like an arch. I'm going to give it a big arch. You'll have to dip a couple times. This is a little harder than just using colored pencils because you have to dip quite a few times to get the right color and to get it all spread out. We're going to go back and forth. Remember to always have your brush strokes. Don't go like this because it doesn't give you the best look that you would like. So always do your brush strokes. Same position. Look, I'm already making a mess and that's why we have our projects paper so we don't make a mess everywhere. So make a pretty thick line with your color hue. Just like that. There you go. Blend out your lines just a little bit. They're a little messy, that's okay. We'll just learn how to get it better. Okay, now I'm gonna add more water and mix it in with what I already have. So don't push very hard or else you will bring up more pigment and you will not have the shade you really want. Getting some more water and I'm just going to slightly mix it across the top with the liquid I already have. Now we're going to go across the middle. It kind of looks dark when it first go on and that's okay. But see, once you start mixing it, it's kind of lighter. Just like that. Okay. Now at this point, get some water on your brush and just barely dip it in the side. Just like that. And then when you add white to red, you get like a pink color. As you can see, we're getting right here. We're getting like kind of pinky color. Okay, now I'm going to wash off my brush just a little bit so there's not quite as big red. And I'm just going to use the water. And I'm going to go across the middle and I'll still have a little bit of pink in here. And I'll try blending it out right here. And we'll see the blending of it going all the way from our color hue to tints. There you go. That's how we got it started right there. Now grab your paint and let's get your color hue back. Mix this back up really good so you get your color hue. Okay. Now this I'm sorry I did not tell you this before, but you will also need a paper plate. I forgot to grab that. Let me grab mine out of my set real quick. So we have our paper plate right here. And this helps so you don't ruin your paint and you don't get all messy in here when you have to actually mix colors. So you grab this, you get your color hue, and you drag it off to the side of the um, plate like this. So it'll drip down, get it a whole bunch on your brush and drag it off the side. See, just like that. Okay, now I'm going to mix it here. Let's get a little bit more because we still have a quite a bit of the page to still cover. Okay, have this on my plate. Now wash off your brush. And we're going to get some black to make some shades. So let's get some good color of the black. And for now, I'm just going to do one drag of this color. So that looks cool. See just like that. Now we're gonna mix these two together. So we get a nice color. See look at that. Kind of starting to look like a really dark brown. Now bring this on your paper and go really close to the hue because we've only added some black. We haven't added a whole bunch. Go next to your hue. Start mixing. Just like that. Okay. Try blending this out some. Get it really nice. Blend out all your brush strokes. If you have too much paint on your brush, just wipe it off so you don't Get your color too far towards the middle. Okay. 
there you go so you can also see it already see it happening okay now for our next one let's just get a little bit more red in there just to be safe so let's get more of our red color that we need get more drips on the side let's add about four more of those okay now wash off your brush just so you don't mix it all up with the black and let's get about two drops of black this time got that now i got two let's grab your color and mix it up really good until you think it looks darker i don't know about you but i think that looks quite a bit darker Okay, now we're going to go across the top, along the edge of our little arch that we have. Okay, get some more on our brush. Go back and forth, make sure all your brush strokes are the same way. So you don't get any messy looking lines. Okay. Now we got that color. Now we're going to add some more black. Mix that up. We're running out of water there. So add some more water. Make sure you mix it up really good so it doesn't look like you added white. Okay. Now you're going to add a couple more drips of this black in there. Okay, now when we mix this up, it's going to look almost completely black. And I told you guys before that once you add so much black to your color, it's pretty much just black. And you guys can see that here. Now, let's see. Go back and forth along the edges. Let's get our color all the way around. Okay. Now we have our other side. Of our arch we're gonna go like that fixing our little brush strokes on the sides we don't have any really dark spots compared to the rest and there you go look how nice that looks remember to always wash off your brushes because you do not want to ruin them today we painted a little bit at home my little sister did not wash her brush and I ruined it I was not very happy, <laughs> and I don't think any of you guys would be very happy if you ended up ruining some of your nice brushes, because then you wouldn't be able to paint any really fun projects, and that'd be sad. Okay, you can see how that turned out here. Let's wait for it to dry just a little bit. Okay, because we did this first, it's dry, so we can move on to what we need to. Now grab your small brush, and... Like I said before, if you're doing like one of these colors, like the sun colors, you would be doing like trees. And if you did blue, you would do stuff like you would do fishes, you would do jellyfish, you would do seaweed. You can even do a little turtle. Okay, I already have black here, so I can use that. And you can either do a tree like this where it just kind of swerves out. And you get a fun little tree like that. You get fun little swervy branches. You can get a fun little tree like that. Add one more branch there. Or you can even do like, do a pine tree even. And bring it back and forth so it kind of looks like that. And you can do a pine tree. Ones I really like doing is the tall, skinny ones. It's when you go like this and your branches all go upward really far. It's kind of like that one, but it's skinnier and the branches don't go too much off to the edge. They kind of just go up. See? You can have little trees like that. You can even add like a little hill in here. And once it dries, you can even go over it again to make it a little darker. Get a little hill, so you can do trees. And sometimes people add like a little house, 
And you can even do that. You can add a fun little house right there. Okay, look. You can add a little swing here if you even want. Have a lot of fun. Do whatever you want with this part. Once you get all your value figured out and you got all your color hue with your tints and your shades, you can do whatever you want on the fun. You can be on the front, not the fun. On the front. And you can be really creative with whatever you do. You can do a lot of trees. But just be careful not to get too much on here because it's no fun when you go over and goes splat and just drip something on your really pretty painting. So make sure, like, before you go, you can even check a couple times and make sure you don't have any drips because that's never fun when that happens. So once you are done with your project, put this somewhere where it can finish drying. I'm just going to put it here. Make sure to put your watercolors back in your case like this and lay it flat so it doesn't drip everywhere when it dries. Set that down. Put your rags away and make sure to put all your supplies back in whatever you're keeping them in and wash out all of your brushes and then dump out all this dirty water later. You don't want to end up spilling this anywhere because that will not be fun. So you got your brushes clean, dry them all off, clean them all off the ends, put them away. You can even wash off your plate if you like. You can rub it with the end of your rag just so it can dry off and you can use this again because once that dries you're fine. Okay well that was a fun project. That was a lot of fun. And thank you guys for joining me as we went over the um, the element value. It was really a lot of fun being here with you guys today. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Please join me next time and we'll be going over the element form. Now, you guys, go be creative and find joy.